To put it mildly, the Peneplesian Wars didn't end well for Athens. While starting off odds-on favourite, it ended up having its ass pretty thoroughly handed to it, in some degree down to flaws inherent in its democratic style of government. Indeed, Athens narrowly avoided being levelled and enslaved, suffering instead the murderous 30 tyrants of a Spartan puppet regime. And most of the Athenians who escaped enslavement and uh, levelling were famous philosophy Jesus, Socrates, and his adoring pupil Plato. What's not quite so famous, because it's a bit embarrassing, is that Socrates had tutored many of those murderous tyrants, and that Plato, as a 20-year-old aristocrat with Spartan sympathies and with relatives already in the regime, was probably being groomed to take a place in it. So when the oligarchs were overthrown by Athenian Democrats, who then got round to executing Socrates on pumped-up charges, Plato thought it wise to jump on a boat and spend 12 years floating around seeking solace in a weird triangle cult. Now apart from Pythagoras, other influences on this certainty-hungry young conservative included Parmenides, Empedocles and Heraclitus. It was by wedding Parmenides' way of truth with the rather rarefied mathematical account of existence provided by Pythagoras that Plato addressed the sceptical challenge presented by the variability of nature and by extension the vagaries of political fate. We are not nominating you for Secretary of State. I know he made you a promise but circumstances have changed. The result is perhaps best described as a pre-epistemology than a metaphysics, as it's essentially an account of knowledge as certainty and how to get it, rather than an account of being per se. It does, however, make implicit suggestions as to what exists and how it's arranged hierarchically albeit not suggestions that one can find coherently or explicitly expressed by Plato in a single treatise of metaphysics. Nope. 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 And nope. Plato's metaphysical views, such as they were, were expressed only tentatively in his early dialogues, becoming more forceful only perhaps tellingly when his attention was drawn back to politics in the Republic, which is a middle period dialogue. The terribly forceful and rather panicky uh, Platonism with which one is as an atheist likely to be browbeaten these days, well that's got more to do with the post-Mithradic Academy of the likes of Plutarch or Polonius than it has to do with Plato himself or his initial successors like Arcicellus or Canades. Nevertheless, conservatives on the verge of losing their shit sums up rather neatly, I think, a context that's, shall we say, not uncommon uh, when one encounters advocacy for platonic metaphysics. Oh, I'm just a crazy darn fool duck. <laughs> Foundational elements of existence are, according to Plato, forms. Forms are rudimentary categories to which particular things belong or participate. Their significant characteristic is that they are abstract and unchanging, which means that their manifest character does not alter regardless of time, location or the perspective from which they are apprehended. Ultimately, forms, or on some accounts form singular, are the reality in which everything else that exists consists. The ultimate ultimate, ultimate secret of existence. However, because everything that is manifest to the senses uh, is changeable, forms can only be apprehended by the rigorous application of pure reason. But when so apprehended, what is known is, in corresponding to what is unchanging and independent of all perspective, known for certain yielding the degree of trustworthiness and freedom from happenstance for which Plato yearned. Now, not every category to which particular things belong 
was, according to Plato, a form. Which is to say in the jargon that not every universal was a form. But important ones, as in politically useful ones, like truth, beauty or justice, that is the categories in which all true, beautiful or just things participate, well they were all at one time or another in Plato's works put forward as being forms. The remainder of reality presumably consists of mere participants, these lesser beings being things whose incomplete manifestation of the form in which they participate depends on the spatio-temporal perspective of the viewer. Subsequently, unlike statements which correspond to forms which are always true, those which address uh, participants are always contingent. They could be true or false, it depends on the circumstance. Also, as we merely come to believe things about participants via the unreliable medium of our senses, as opposed to certain knowledge of them via the exercise of pure reason, any understanding based on participants will be mind-dependent and unreliable. It'll leave us hostage to fortune, which is precisely what Plato was trying to avoid. And basically, that's why Plato thinks empiricism is a load of bollocks. Nevertheless, this hierarchical two-realm view is typical of Platonic metaphysics. Throughout the history of Western metaphysics, there have been times when Platonic metaphysics is dominant, but there have been times when it's moderated by an alternative Aristotelian metaphysics, which I'll be introducing next time. But let me conclude with a demonstration of how a 21st century conservative on the verge of losing his shit might fly off into platonic metaphysics. I'll leave it to you to judge whether this is at all familiar. What I want to do is a thing that, and if the thing is white on one side and black on the other, then that, like, it isn't a form. And that's called the argument of the like, and that provided me my first premise, like, my first premise for my it is giving argument, that. Like. And that goes a bit like this, is the first premise said to that, that if there were no forms, like, if there were none of those, then there'd be contradictions, because things would be black and white, right? Like. And then, right, my second premise, it's the law of non-contradiction, and that, and that, that means there's no contradictions, there's none of them at all. So therefore, by, by modest ones and adaptations, it forms that there are forms. And you know what forms are like? Forms are like God. They were good. They were the longest at the end of these three times. <laughs> oh, hi. <clears throat> no, I'm not doing anything. Nothing at all. I have no idea what the screen's got on the internet. In this series of videos, I'm going to introduce my fellow atheists, or indeed anyone else who's interested, to a history of Western metaphysics. For no other reason than to provide a means of dealing with perfectly valid but somewhat dubious arguments like the one you've just heard. So until next time, thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.